So maybe to switch gears a little bit, uh, because we know that despite so some of the best preventative measures, sometimes stones do recur. Dr. Palese, could you talk a little bit about what some of the surgical procedures are in treating kidney stones and when they're used? Um, absolutely. So there's really uh, four categories for surgical uh, clearance of stones. Um, the, the classic one that people always think about is, is the, is the shockwave lithotripsy or when people ask, oh, do I have to sit in a bath or do I have to go into, into a bathtub of water to do that? Well, th that was the way we used to do it back in the sixties and seventies. And luckily that that's not the case any anymore. Uh, it's really ultrasounds that we're harnessing to kind of focus the energy on the stone itself. Uh, there's a whole different variety of, uh, machines that are available. Um, they work about 50 to 60% of the time, depending on the stone composition, the size, uh, the body habits of the patient, there have been some, some, um, uh, some newer sort of developments that have made the procedure a little bit uh, more effective. But in general, it's about a 50 to 70% effectiveness rate. So a lot of patients like that because it's, there's no cutting, there's no, uh, there's no uh, invasiveness to it, it's all done from the outside. Uh, and so we'll, we'll sometimes start with that procedure in, in certain patients, especially ones with a softer stone, a softer a variant. Um, the second uh, procedure well known is something called ureteroscopy, uh, where we actually take a scope inside the bladder up into the ureter with a, with a uh, either a what's called a semi rigid or a flexible scope. So we navigate kind of like plumbing, we go up into the uh, into the urinary tract, we find the stone, we use a laser, we break it up, uh, we then pull out the fragments and hopefully get you stone free. Um, you will sometimes require a stent after that procedure. There's a little tube that connects from the kidney to the bladder. It's in there uh, temporarily just to allow for better drainage while there's a lot of swelling. Um, that can sometimes be a source of pain for a lot of patients. I'm sure Art uh, has also probably had his share of stents, uh, as most, most uh, kidney stone patients have. Um, and so that's a fairly common procedure as well. I do quite a bit of that. Um, the third way is something called a percutaneous nephrolithotomy or PCNL. Uh, it's basically where we go through the back, uh, where we actually make a little hole into the back area, removing the stone that way. Um, that has also changed. Uh, the technology's changed a little bit over the last few years as well. There are something called mini perks where we do it through very small incisions. Um, but nevertheless, I mean, the, the, the whole process is, is instead of making a big incision or a big uh, sort of old school incision, doing everything through small percutaneous incisions with video cameras and a laser and, and certain procedures, uh, certain uh, equipment that actually breaks up the stone. Uh, there's one in particular that I love to using. It's sort of like a jackhammer and just breaking it, just like we think of cement. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get to play uh, video games uh, when I go to work. Um, and then the last thing is sort of a newer area that we've, we've really started to develop a lot. It's robotic pilothotomy. So very, very large stones uh, that just would not clear or won't be cleared with, a, with normal means where even a percutaneous approach uh, may be too big for the stone. The stone may be too big for that approach. And so in which case we go in with a, with a robot with uh, little incisions about a half an inch each. We literally make a small incision in the kidney pull out the stone, sew, sew it back up. The whole process can be about a 45 minute procedure, an hour at the most. Uh, and I'm doing quite a few of those now too for the, some of these very large, what are called staghorn calculi, these big stones that are kind of stuck in the kidney that just won't, uh, won't, won't be cleared very easily otherwise. Um, so really four major surgical approaches. Each of them sometimes can overlap. Sometimes we use a combination of the two. Um, but in general, we can get most patients stone free without having to do sort of the old school big incision on the side, cutting through the rib cage, getting into the trying to find the kidney. That was something that used to happen back, uh, you know, in the sixties and seventies. It's very rare now. Most of these procedures are done through a minimally invasive approach. Excellent. Good to hear that technology is evolving in a way that uh, makes these things a bit a bit easier.